Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to this special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It's that time of the week again to count down the 10 hottest cards of the week. And much like last week, we have a pretty good variety of reasons why cards are going up in value. That seems to happen when we're in between preview seasons. Although, in Astride Midnight Hunt, previews officially start tomorrow. So I'm sure in next week's top 10, you're going to see a lot of cards tied into those previews. Quickly, though, before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Innistrad Midnight Hunt products there. They also have a whole lot of other things on their website. And remember, shipping is free in the United States if your order is over $100 or it consists only of singles. On top of that, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, Let's get into it. Number 10, Kaya Orzov Usurper from Ravnica Allegiance. This goes up 204 this week to 838. That is a 32% increase. This is a good time to let you know how we compile our top 10 every week. We look at two major pieces of criteria. The first is a percentage increase in the price of the cards that we're looking at. And secondly, we want to see a true increase in sales online. If there's a card that you're expecting to show up this week that's not here, then it fell short in one or both of those categories. Now with that out of the way, let's talk more about this card here. In Modern, this is seeing play in Abzan Stoneblade. It's also showing up sometimes in sideboards and builds like Orzov Stoneblade and Reanimator. It is a good tool against Reanimator, which has become more popular in the format. Also, this is good against Pithing Needle that's in a lot of sideboards there, and a whole lot of other cards you could run into in that format. Plus, this could be somewhat of a reaction to Champion of the Perished, that was one of the early Innistrad Midnight Hunt previews we saw a couple weeks ago, but it is a one casting cost creature, which could potentially be a powerful card in the future, if not in Modern, maybe at least in Pioneer. Additionally, this still gets a little Legacy play and Commander play as well. Number 9 is Temporary Truce. This goes up 281 to 2386. That is a 13% increase. Now this does get a tad bit of Commander play, but it is one of those cards that's yet to be reprinted, it is hard to find in good condition online. Seems like, again, when we are between these preview seasons, we do see some buyers gravitate back to cards like this that are on their want list. Number 8 is Fracturing Gust from Shadowmoor. This goes up 360 to 1799 for a 25% increase. This was recently reprinted in the Showcase Strixhaven Secret Layer. Nevertheless, this copy is still going up in value. It is a good modern sideboard card in Azori's Control and more. It's useful against Urza Saga, which is in a lot of builds there. Also good against Enchantress or any of the decks leaning harder on artifacts like Hammer Time, for example. This can see a little commander play as well. Number 7, Lailia the Blade Reforged. This goes up 368 this week to 703 for a 110% increase. Now, this is a good upgrade to two of the adventures in the Forgotten Realms commander decks. Planar Portal being one of them and it was used as an upgrade there in a recent Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast. This is also a great upgrade to Draconic Rage, and many players are adding this to fresh builds around cards from those decks, Prosper Tomebound and Wolfgar of Icewind Dale. Additionally, this is getting more commander play and builds around another new card from the main set, Targnar Demon Fang Knoll. When it comes to the future for this card, I do think it could see some additional play since it is a spirit, we know there's two Innistrad sets coming, as well as Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Those are two planes that have traditionally supported Spirits. There's even a Commander deck coming out with Innistrad Crimson Vow called Spirit Squadron, although traditionally, Innistrad Spirits and Spirit Support has been in white and blue colors. This being red means it might not be compatible with some of the things coming out in the near future in Commander. Beyond that, though, we are even getting an Azoria Spirits Pioneer deck, and of course this is not Pioneer Legal, but having those cards reprinted could encourage players to play more Spirits in Commander, and this card could get picked up more for that. Number 6 is Death Coil Worm. This goes up 439 this week to 1599. That is a 38% increase. Another card that some collectors may be picking up this week. It's yet to be reprinted. It is a little dry online right now. It gets a tad bit of Commander play, but not all that much. Number 5, Okagachi Vengeful Kami up 519 this week to 1617 for a 47% increase. This card only comes in foil. First, this did get a push in Commander due to the Dragon Tribal support in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. 
It is seen playing commander builds like the Ur-Dragon and Tiamat, but this is also a fairly popular commander, and in addition to being a dragon, it's also a spirit. This card is only going to get better in commander with the upcoming spirit support. Flusterstorm comes in at number 4. Iconic Masters up 332 to $25. That is a 15% increase. The commander copy up 605 to 3541. That is a 21% increase. Now, this became Modern Legal when Modern Horizons came out since it was the buy a box promo for that set. It has been seeing a good amount of sideboard play in that new modern meta that's really come together since Modern Horizons 2 came out. It's in Is It Tempo and much more there. This also continues to get a lot of legacy and vintage play, but Commander may be pushing this as well this week. It shows up in a lot of decks there already. However, playing with Power MTG on YouTube, they held a patron CEDH tournament last week, and if you take out Artifacts and Lands, this was in the top 10 most played cards in that tournament. It was also in two of the top four decks there. They were both Najila the Blade Blossom builds. Number three, Knights of Thorn. This goes up 641 this week to 2329. That is a 38% increase. Even though reserve list cards from the dark are not as hot as they were a few months ago, you do still see one or two jumping a little each week. Many times they quickly retract, but there is at least a little interest in high grade copies from collectors still. This does see a tad bit of commander play, but again, not too much. Number two is Torpor Orb. This is going up 657 to 1999. That is a 49% increase. And this is another very solid modern sideboard card. And since it is colorless, it can cross over into a number of different builds. It is decent against Dark Kind of Cruelty. That card has been seeing more play recently in the format. Also good against other targets like the Evoke Elemental Cycle for Modern Horizons 2. Those see a good amount of play in a lot of places, including five color elementals. And that's another deck that has been very popular recently. Plus, you'll find many other targets for this card in that deck. Ultimately, there are plenty of reasons why this is seeing more play in the modern format. You'll find this in Jund, Hardened Scales, Eldrazi Tron, and much more. And again, this also might be somewhat of a reaction to the Champion of the Perished preview. Additionally, it continues to get a good amount of legacy play. Plus, it's seen more commander play recently. Some players have picked this up as an upgrade to Aura of Courage, another one of those adventures in the Forgotten Realms commander decks. Others are putting this in fresh builds around a card from there, Galea Kindler of Hope. And I have seen this in some Oswald Fiddlebender builds, too. And number one is Well of Knowledge. It goes up 958 this week to 1750. That is a 121% increase. Now, this does see a tad bit of commander play, sometimes in group hug or pillow fort style builds but it is a reserve list card that is hard to find online in good condition. Due to this quick increase in value, it looks like this could perhaps be the target of a buyout. That's going to do it for this week's Top 10 Hot Cards, but remember to join us this weekend for our regular episode of The Market Watch. There we deep dive into everything that's happening in the secondary market. And until then, hey, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.